Okay, so what would be examples? What does this look like? A behavior where animals simply know how to do it without learning, without experience, and they can do it right from the start, and nonetheless experience shapes it better. Obviously, first example was all of Charlotte's babies knowing how to say salutations within a few seconds of being born there, and no doubt they would soon learn who not to say that to classic example, and this was one that Lorenz studied for years and always wanted to have the pig killed because of Nazi scum. Okay, but anyway, I digress. And other examples, you take a squirrel, you take a squirrel that's been raised in a cage without ever seeing another squirrel, a squirrel that has subsisted on nothing but a liquid diet and, and that kind of thing, and give it a nut and it will know how to crack it it will know to carry out this fixed action pattern. This is not an instinct for food acquisition. This is something instinctual for how you hold this thing and where you chew on it or whatever it is that squirrels do. It's in there, the squirrel doesn't have to learn how to do it. But what you see is you take that squirrel without any prior experience with nutcrack and you look at them over time and they get better at it. They do it faster they get a larger percentage of whatever, whatever's inside there. They have a basic hardwired fixed action pattern, a bunch of coordinated muscles doing a coherent set behavior, and it is shaped by experience. In this case, they learn how to do it better. Another example. This is one where you have any of those intro psych books from anywhere in the 1950s, 60s or so, and there was this inevitable picture where you had, it was this room, there was this surface, and it had a checkerboard linoleum on it, and the surface came to around here, and then it dropped down about three feet, and then continued the same on the bottom. It was always the same checkerboard linoleum, linoleum which was like worth its weight in gold at the time, linoleum which was going to make life better for everyone. So you had this checkered linoleum thing there, and the critical thing was right around here when the wall dropped down, right here was a sheet of glass that continued out there. In other words, the actual floor would continue here on the glass while it was also dropping down to this. And what was always in one of those pictures would be some adorable, cute baby animal sitting out there on the glass totally freaking out because it's out there and it's looking way down there and there's stuff, a yawning chasm below of three feet and you are eliciting what was called a visual cliff response, which is get me out of here. I'm floating up in the air here. You did not have to have animals who already had experience by you know, trial and error, learning that when you're floating in the air, that tends not to last for long and you get owies afterward. There was no, it's there in the first place. You take a baby dog, you take a baby human, you take a baby blue whale, whatever, and you push them out on the glass there and they look down and they totally freak out. Unless, they're a baby sloth. Oh, isn't that kind of interesting? Because if you're a baby sloth who gets freaked out by yawning space underneath you, you are not going to be a very functioning sloth when you grow up there. Oh, species-specific fixed action patterns, where in this case, this visual cliff could evoke this whole fixed action pattern of panic responses, all of that. So where does the learning come in? You push this poor animal out there enough times, the 40th time the elephant's out there, and, the, and it begins to learn. I don't know what's up with this because this gravity business is making sense otherwise, but it seems to be okay when I'm out here. You could habituate the visual cliff response, but all sorts of animals, except for arboreal ones hanging up there, all sorts of species didn't have to have prior experience with not liking to drop down open spaces. It was there already. They learned the context better. Another example of this that the ethologist soon showed, but these were with captive primates. You take a monkey who was raised in isolation, has never seen another monkey, and at some point in adolescence, it's a male monkey, and you sit him down, and you show him a film. 
And the film consists of the face of a huge, scary male monkey of the same species giving a threatening display, which is usually displaying the canines there. And this is a monkey who has no prior experience with monkeys. It has never seen a monkey before. All of its interactions have been with Barney or whatever. It knows nothing about any of this. And you show it that, and it will freak out and give a fixed action pattern a subordinate gesture, crouching down and not making eye contact. Whoa, where'd that come from? No learning from trial and error. It was simply there as a fixed action pattern, a whole bunch of things that the monkey does with its torso, its face, all of that. Where does experience come in? The monkey needs to learn that you give a subordinating gesture like that to some big scary animal, you don't give it to infants. It needs to learn the right social context.